Yo! What up, internet? How are you? Welcome to Bricks. And beer. And beer. Tequila. And tequila. And toys. Wait, Episode your toys. 47. The... What's this one about? That's right. The big Star Wars. The big SW. Um, if you guys hate Star Wars... Yeah. Bye. Yeah, you probably don't want to watch this one. Yeah. Um, There's a little bit of Thor we're going to talk about, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. And some other stuff. We'll talk Lego, but it's a... Uh, it's going to be... It's, it's a gonna mixer. Be, it's a mixer It's going to be an time. interesting one. This yeah. is going to be a little different. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, um, as always, you guys can click a thing, except you can't, because there's no more annotations. Why do you, why, why, so, so <laughs> why is this happening right now? I, I don't know, because click I mean, on it's it. just normal, just so like, see just what happens. tap on your screen, just press right here for Star Wars. Lick it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's Look, one. it's Darth Vader. Look yeah. at this shit. This is an OG soundtrack. Classic. It's a record player. We were going to play the music. But we'll get kicked off of YouTube. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. So just uh, sing your own acapella version. I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid to even hum it. So there you go. Um, there's a record, Star Wars. So this one's this one's kind of an interesting one. It's been in the hopper for a really really long time. Um, we kind of had like this like masterful plan to do this crazy two part thing. I think we're just gonna throw that out the window and just do one long, confusing episode. <laughs> that's the that's the, the entire masterful so, uh, plan is that. If you guys want to hang no, out, no, um, you know, enjoy whole, yourselves. Two masterful plans right there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, tonight I am drinking Dale's Pale Ale. It has nothing to do with Star Wars. It's from Colorado. Colorado. That's right. Colorado. Right. I'm, um, I'm drinking good. a margarita that is. Uh, Powered by George Clooney's tequila. Yes, yeah. yes, the Casamigos. Oh, I tossed the bottle, but uh, you, you can should get that tequila. It's uh -huh. it's expensive, but it's good. Um, I feel like tequila is the one booze where the quality and the price definitely go together. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> Elephant who? What? Sorry, um, I didn't realize he was in frame. Yeah, no, it's fine. He's hanging out. He's our third chair tonight. I've got crazy toys down there uh, right now. I've we got... had we had to open my garage so Jeff could bring yeah. in like bins of toys, for bins tonight. and boxes, and, um, and all kinds of stuff. Just just in case, like like for instance, like this is um, old original Star Wars accessories in here. See. You're so much more organized in your Star Wars storage. I know, but it's, I'm so far behind in my Lego sorting. It's yeah, I guess the Lego sorting is more functional. I have just like two bins of miscellaneous Star Wars shit. Um, so yeah, so we've got a lot of Star Wars. In we've been house. trying to do this since May the Fourth, pretty much, because that's when I bought some Star Wars Lego, and I, I kind of like have I have this weird relationship with Star Wars, right? It's like a hot cold. It's like an abusive relationship. I'm a battered spouse. The way I date it is that I I don't not this year, but maybe last year I got you Ray's speeder. Yes, yes, um, the Lego and, version. And because you were, because I was like, this is a good set. And Andrew at the, at the time was all, it's like I'm not buying into the hype. I'm not, well, I'm not doing the Force Awakens. Yeah, you know, I'm not yeah. doing emo ran. You know. Too cool for that, you know. And uh, my thoughts and, about the Force Awakens are still that it's not the greatest, but. It was, I, it I was, like it more and more now. It was a little too homage just like Superman Returns was. Um, yeah. But it was a much better movie than that. But uh, it was a Star Wars movie that didn't hurt. And that's what we needed, you know? And the prequels just hurt. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that's true. Like, so let's talk about the prequels. So tell me about your perspective of the prequels, and I'll tell you about mine. Um... Well, I was eight when Star Wars came out, and I might be saying to you A New Hope, but it was just Star Wars back then, so that's what I always call it. Um, and that was a perfect time, the perfect age to be when Star Wars came out. Um, this, this was the era when people called you a Star Wars lover? Uh, that came later. <laughs> that came later. But that, that was, yeah, there's, that's right, that's right. I got, yes. you know, eventually yes. was, was taunted for really liking Star Wars. Um, and, uh, but... The thing is, um, Star Wars was was everything, you know. Like, you know, it was just like, yeah, it's just like this, just pre Star Wars and post Star Wars, really. Yeah, there's not yeah. much science fiction pre Star Wars, you know. I actually have 
I have an old issue of Playboy from 1976, and that's a whole other story about why I have that. But um, there's a thing about Logan's Run, and they go, they're like, yeah, there hasn't really been like a big sci-fi movie since Kubrick's 2001, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah. sci-fi, you know, here's Logan's Run, and here's a bunch of people having sex because this is Playboy. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I just read that, and I was like, oh, you were a year away, you motherfuckers. Like, you had no clue what was coming. Um, um, can you show, real quick, can you show the camera this glass? Did you look at this glass? I do not. I have no idea what so, this is. this is from Tony's on the Pier. Tony's on Dondo the Pier. Dondo Beach, California. Okay. Is... Uh, if you turn it around, that's actually Tony's okay, here we on go. the Pier. Um, yeah. So Tony's the reason I have a bunch of these, and the reason why I have a bunch of these, is if you go to Tony's and you buy this ridiculous, like, tropical bullshit 151 eight dollar cocktail you get the glass for free so of okay. course when you go with a group of people me and my wife are like fuck yeah we're keeping our glasses and then all these other drug assholes are like oh no I, do you want my glass and my wife's like fuck yeah i yeah. do like ching ching so we just have this like stack of those yeah. upstairs good for you it's, uh, it's good times Tony's not bad. Oh, wait, it says Tony's right here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an OG there's a place. Pic, there's a picture like, of Tony's. Shout out to Redondo sign. Beach. Yeah. Um, Redondo's a little rough around the edges, and that's why I like it. Mm. Do you know what my favorite part of that story is? I did pour margarita all over your keyboard. <laughs> oh, yes. Because yeah, yes. I, I did that to my that, wife once. That would be a... Uh, it would be a short episode. It would basically be <laughs> yeah, right. your cover of the Fredel episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right, now I don't want to touch any liquids. Shout out to Fredo. Shout out to Fredo. Um, so yeah, so back to Star Wars. Uh, so tell me about your, your experience with the prequels. So you came out, you, so, yeah. you were eight when the OG happened. That was obviously yeah. like a big Well, here's deal. the thing. is like before the prequels came out, there was the special editions, and they, those were already pretty problematic. Yeah, um, yeah. The Ron Till is that's why, so weak. It's so um, weak. However, here, okay, here, here's this toy. This is the uh, Galoob Battle Pack, sort of a subset of Action Fleet. Oh, do bad. Sorry, my dog. Andrew's dog is doing something crazy. So here's here's the thing. The first time I see Star Wars, very first time, May 1977, I'm sitting next to my mom, and they're about to go into the cantina. And right next to the door to the cantina is the, the Dubak. They had one practical puppet of the Dubak, which was so crappy, you really hardly ever saw it. The, the, some stormtroopers yeah. are riding yeah. it, but it's way in the background. Um, there was a Star Wars card that was a close-up of the Dubak, which was weird because you didn't even see that in the movie. But, I mean, it's just a big head on a stick, you know, a two-by-four probably, right? Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's right there next to the door, and it's just like, it just kind of like slowly dips into a trough of water or something like that. It's just, it's, it's an easy... You know, uh, thing to do to pull off, and they and they did it. It was just a wonderful part of the whole texture that was that movie. And I was about to say something to my mom about it, and before I got to, she's like, "Jeff, look at that creature." I was like, "I know, I know, I know." Right? It was yeah, just wonderful, yeah, wonderful moment. Yeah. And in 1997, George Lucas put a CG do back right over that puppet. You know, so that I mean, moment in your childhood. It was literally <laughs> plastered over my childhood, you know. And but he gave you a Ronto. Don't, uh, don't you like the Ronto? <laughs> <laughs> eh, the Ronto's okay. But here's the thing. I, despite all that bitching I just did, this is a great design. And yeah, every the new back is awesome. Every toy like, I, th that I've got off of this, and I have a couple, I have three of the action figure ones. Okay, yeah, the Power I, of the Force... Version? I think so. Yeah, yeah. the ones you yeah. move the tail and they open. Yeah, them I had I had one of those and I fucking sold it and I I almost rebought it like at a Robo Toy Fest. Oh yeah, and the dude was like twenty bucks and I'd already bought all this other bullshit and I was like, ah, oh, twenty dollars, like ah, oh. and I'm fucking kicking myself now because they're all twenty dollars at eBay plus shipping and I'm like, God, I'm an asshole. I should just fucking whip the twenty dollars out at the time. I had two of those. And I lost one. I, I don't know. Dude, I love... That's like... That quality of plastic is like a Dino Riders toy. Like, have you ever touched a Dino Riders toy? Have you ever handled Dino Riders? Just the just the little figures. Just the oh, man. The, the dinosaurs themselves were like Hardcore? really well sculpted. And yeah. it's that really hard ABS plastic mm -hmm. that's like... It, you know, oil was cheap in the 80s. <laughs> or at least for Thick part of them. Plastic. Yeah. It was yeah. like there weren't waffles in all of your toys. Um, if I seem really fucking weirdly distracted, it's because my dog has a new habit of destroying shit all the time. Uh, so she she murdered her pizza toy earlier. Puppies. We almost had to uh, have a crisis because of that. And just now, um, spoilers, 
Star Wars, Lego. You guys want you guys want some Lego action in here. Here's this Y-Wing set, right? It's pretty cool. Um, you get uh, Admiral Raddus and Moroff. Where are they? Right there. Hey, right there. Boom. There you go. Admiral Raddus. He's a he's a gangster, man. Um, Rogue One is really like kind of what what's kicking my love of Star Wars back together because Rogue One is just like amazing. I can watch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's the Lego Moroff and the Y-Wing pilot, and, uh, you know, a Death Star graphic, because why not? Um, so anyway, this has this really cool feature where you can drop bombs out, and apparently I dropped one on the floor, and my dog oh. decided to fucking chew the shit out of it, so now I think my dog is eating every piece of Lego in the room. So if I'm just darting down here, it's because she's eating this thing, this Nyla bone, the only kind of toys we can give her that she doesn't just fucking destroy. Which is a hard plastic thing. Puppies. Sounds almost exactly like this. Uh, so yeah. So things being chewed. Welcome uh, that to sound like other things hood. being chewed. Yes. Yeah, we got yes. it all. We got it all. So uh, yeah. So Star Wars. So prequels come out. So but, yeah, but I got, you're you're, I, you're still on special editions, which I remember. So I saw Empire. There was a there was a warning element in Jedi because the Ewoks, right? And then the special editions came out, and there was a warning element there. But there was a lot of good stuff in the special editions, like the Death Star battle and the at the end of A New Hope. I hate the new Jabba. The the episode yeah, episode yeah, yeah, four yeah. is the most offensive of all of them. The the new Wampa was great. Yeah, like I love that. Yeah, they toned it down later. They they got a little artsy. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, well, it was shit that kind of like needed to be. Like if mm -hmm. you watch that original Wampa scene in the OG, there's hardly any Wampa. Yeah, it's just like yeah. here's a flash, here's a noise. But the Wampa costume just wasn't that good. So they, yeah, they had to jaws it, which I, you know? I understand, and they kind of made it better in a way because that's like movie magic, right? You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, the Wampa. Right, and the then you see the toys, and that's like how you fill in the gaps, right? Or yeah. all the ancillary material. Yep. Um, which, like, that's the crazy thing about Star Wars, right? Is it's so far-reaching, and it's every medium pretty much available. There's mm -hmm. Star Wars something. Yep. The, the thing that I'm doing with my wife lately, which she's really annoyed by, she's annoyed by a lot of shit that I'm doing lately, is <laughs> everywhere we go, right. like, I For now change. point out, I go, so I, I'm just like, it's the most, like, far-reaching cultural art piece of our generation. Here's how I'm going to prove it to you. Every time I see a bumper sticker, mm -hmm. somebody wearing a shirt, yeah, a somebody with everywhere. somebody with a something, and it, they're fucking everywhere, dude. Yeah. Like, it's crazy yeah. to me. All kinds of weird styles, dude. Um, you know? there's, so there's like there's a there's a mode for anybody, and you can be yeah, to Star Wars, yeah, in so, all kinds of ways. And I, ironically, I only have two fucking Star Wars shirts, and I'm like, I'll tell you a story about how hardcore I was, um, and then we'll. We'll talk about lost love, but let's let's talk about your prequel experience. I got to see episode one about two weeks before it opened because a friend of mine all of a sudden got uh, it was a, it was a, a screening for theater owners, like people who actually oh, ran movie theaters. Wow! So my childhood buddy, who's also named Jeff, um, who uh, is is my oldest friend, he's been my friend since fourth grade. We were like we did tons of geek stories together. He'll come up again almost certainly later this evening. Um, I call him from a payphone after seeing episode one, and he's like, was it amazing? Was it amazing? And I'm just sitting there, and we're all still reeling from Jar Jar yeah. Banks and the pod race. Uh, I, Any, anything that, like, connected to the OG trilogy, I remember it being a big deal. Like, uh, um, it the, the sand people, people cheered when there was the fucking sand person sniping in the pod race. Yeah, but that, that, and like, I didn't like that movie, basically. I could go on and on and on, obviously, but, um. Well, I'm just, I'm curious, because, uh. Design-wise, there was some stuff. So, so you were, you were critical at the time it came out. Oh, like, God. Of its release. I'm, yeah, I've okay. never, I've never not been. And how, how old were you when that came out? Um, yeah, or like, what age? You were in college. No, I was already, I, I graduated from college in 91. Okay. So this is eight years later. Okay. You know, so I'm in, I'm almost thirty. Yeah, no, yeah. I turned thirty that year, so I was twenty nine. Yeah. So okay, so let's let's talk about my prequel experience because I think our our this is going to explain a lot to you about yeah my whole fucked up thing with Star Wars, right? Okay, sure. That's so good. I, I believe that nineteen ninety nine is when Episode one comes out, right? Correct. Ninety eight, ninety nine. Nope, you got it right. Ninety nine. So I am seventeen, going on eighteen. No, I'm sixteen, going on seventeen. I am hardcore. I have been buying Star Wars action figures with my fucking fish taco money 
for wow. a couple of years at that point. Like the uh, the re-release okay, okay, yeah. of so the like re-release. Power of the Force two. Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. first wave of like ultra buff uh, I got, figures. I got, a, I, got a, I got a good story. About I that. I own like pretty much all of those. They're in a bin in my garage. Uh-huh. Um, and it was just like because it, it, I had this era where I was really into the OG trilogy when I was about 12, 13. Star Wars. And uh, yeah, dude, like I'm so jealous of how you. These are all the all the all the shit. normal size ones. I know. I, I, I don't I like, think... dude. Is that the fucking Dubak Sand Trooper? It might be. Uh, no, he's got, I he's think... got the stance. Yeah, does he have because the uh, the other no, storm tro- yeah he's the got, other one has a knees. fucked up stance Same yeah knees. which was a big deal yeah. that was a big deal and he had the lance the lance was rad oh but that's I, fucking I, awesome I, there's a there's a three peel I want to find but keep talking so, um, okay 16, so, you, so I'm like all figures. into that like I'm in high school I I have two other friends that are sort of in Star Wars we're all buying figures I'm I'm pissed there were there were things that I missed from that era. I'm going back now and getting, which are like fucking amazing. But there was there was a lot of shit that came out. Like the Wampa, they had that beast pack with the Wampa. That was fucking awesome. I had the the do back. The do back was fucking amazing. So I'm all in, right? Even before the prequels are announced. Mm-hmm. I'm reading the uh, Star Wars Insider magazine at Barnes and Noble. All right. Because this is when Barnes and Noble first opened and you're about sixteen. One of the cool things about it is you can just go in there for six hours and read every read graphic magazine. novel. That's right, they have yeah. these big fucking comfy chairs and yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, no wonder Amazon's winning. Like, <laughs> I don't even have to leave my house. Um, but anyway, so so I'm like fully in. I'm reading Dark Empire, which I think is one of the best fucking pieces right. of fiction related to Star Wars ever. Um, we really poorly planned this episode because like Jeff did bring five hundred bins of toys. Oh. And he immediately walked in and he was like, fuck, I forgot this and this and this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, I should have pulled my Dark Empire books. They're in that closet over there. I'm it's going to it's gonna take me a half hour to dig them out to show you guys, like, my favorite I'm, piece I'm, of I'm art. I'm trying to find the G1. I, there he is. Here he is. Yeah. Oh, the, the shiny background one. Yeah, I yeah. have that one. G1 1997 3PO. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah. And then they made the one that uh, Chewie could carry that... Popped apart. Yep. That was that was extra. Yeah, he's good. pretty good too. Like the um, the five POA figures were so good at that point, and then sometimes they would have more. Like you sometimes got knees or fucking like Luke with the removable hand gave you a wrist swivel. Um, I, I got a story about this guy though. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Let's do it. All right, Let's so do it. It's I I can't. I, once I pinned it down, I have it. I typed this out on my blog one time. Another thing, but um, it was ninety six, I think. Before the, yeah, it was 96. It was right before the uh, special editions were coming out. That's when Kenner did, or if they still existed, or Hasbro did the, the, started doing this again. That's the super buff, like weird looking Luke. Weird looking yeah, Vader. yeah, he's right. swole. All of them are swole. Vader's swole. Yeah. Han Solo swole. I mean, 3PO, if you look at him, he's like walking it's, like it's, he's buff. I mean, he's not. Yeah, but it's, obviously, it's but. almost perfect, though. It's like the 3PO on, like, perfect model. It's a little too spindly and a little too yeah, fragile yeah. for an action figure. True. And the the vac metal chrome like just makes those. Yeah, he's nice. It's it's funny because like those sculpts are horrible, but the quality of those action figures is fucking great. Like <laughs> there's there's so <laughs> many good things. Dude. So durable, they look like crap. Well, like dude, I, these Jawas, I've had these. Oh, Jawas those forever. Jawas are so. Dude. They're so fucking great. Um, they're so creepy. They're so creepy. Like they with, dude, the, with the light uh, up eyes I, and it's the light thing through. It's the plastic through the top of the I, head. I definitely fucked so up. So old school. So the I have two unopened Star Wars figures still. Uh-huh. Everything else is open. I like have this fucking come to Jesus moment like a, a year ago where I opened. All my episode one figures that I'd had since 1999 for 20 years or whatever. <laughs> fucking like, I opened everything. And then I put dude. it in a little plastic baggie so it's okay. So okay, so going going back to the story. We're going gonna, gonna, gonna to go back to the Black journey. Friday, 1996. My friend Jeff and I, who I promised I'd mention again, we go to the KB Toy and Hobby. Oh, um, KB was so good back yeah. in the day. Um, and the security gate is down, but the mall's open. Um, so we can go in and look. And right there is a bunch of Star Wars figures. And at that point, he had everything that had been easy to get, except um, what was just coming out that day was Leia and this uh-huh. dude. I only wanted the droids. Um, at that point, I had like I don't need any more Luke Skywalkers. So um, 
I hadn't even gotten an R2 yet, but I knew it was, this is 3PO's coming out that day. Nice. And there's a 3PO, and there's a Leia. And we're like, cool, all right. Mall doesn't open for another 45 minutes. So we're like, let's go check out Walmart and come back. Walmart's no good. But when we get back, there's a bunch of people now. They're kind of parked. Okay. You know, and there's this big dude in army this jacket. Is, and this is like uh, Midnight Madness, right? Uh, like, Black Friday. 7, 7 a.m. on Black Friday. Okay. You know, leading up to 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. the store opens, so, you know. Gotcha. And uh, so I'm, I'm like sidling really close to the big dude in the army jacket, you know, parents' basement, yada, yada. But, I mean, he really, yeah. he really yeah. looks the part. and He, he staked out the right spot. Um, and then this kind of like loud guy comes over and he's like, wow, look at all these people, man. Like... Oh, wow, you all here for the Star You're Wars? A bunch he's of like, nerds. you're here for the Star Wars figures? What are you trying to get? You know, all this stuff. And the guy next to me goes, he's like, well, you know, I'm trying to get some of the hard ones, like 3PO, and, you know, I mean, if they have them, a Boba Fett. And Boba Fett wasn't there that day, it was a rumor. Uh, um, oh, but. Boba uh, Fett was the shit, dude. I, I have the shit. That's a good action figure. I have the shittiest Boba Fett, which is the deluxe one, which came with that fucking ridiculous wing oh, pack. Yeah, like the yeah, EU. Right, like, right, right, right. If Boba Fett took a bunch of steroids and then decided to hang glide. Right. And with gave, missiles. And gave his hang glider a bunch of steroids. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, because I couldn't find the fucking OG Boba Fett. Of, of oh, the, the OG Boba Fett's so good. Um, oh, so I anyway, have them. I have them. So, you know, the thing is, and, and so in that moment, when the, when the guy next to me, who I'm kind of scared is going to get my stuff, like talks to the noisy dude. The rumors are true. Yeah. I, um, I think to myself, ah, I have him. Like, he, he broke his sort of gunslinger persona to actually talk to this dude. So, I, that, somehow that gives you me the edge, weakness. right? You weakness. Yeah, 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 exactly. And um, uh, whether or not that's true, right at that moment, the uh, security gate started to lift up. And then, now the employees are over behind the register. I, I assume somebody was going to walk did, over did and be like... Did you fucking do a slide underneath the gate as it was, like, two feet off the ground? Yes. You're, like, you're, too, you're too fucking yeah. slow to no, get ba- the Basically, I'm, I'm watching this gate go up, and I realize there's going to be no human sort of, you know, tamping down the crazy. Yeah. And I think yeah. to myself, I, I don't have any dignity. I, I've been here for 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, I'm getting what I came for. So when the gate was about yay high, I oh, like, God. boom, crouched, God. rolled under. And I had a full second and a half to myself. And I was like, 3PO, Princess Leia. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Oh, that Princess Leia is flick. so bad. Oh, she's horrible. Yeah, like, Whoa. That's the monkey face Princess Leia. It's, it's like she oh, jumped out of a car and got hit on the yeah. windshield of another yeah. car. Yeah. But, but like, there, suddenly there was, like, a, a swarm of people around me, you know, just, like, grabbing and yeah, grabbing and grabbing. Yeah. And, and I just turned around, and I looked at Jeff, and I held up the two figures with this grin just on my fucking face. victory. It's, that is my best toy acquisition story I <laughs> And this is had. that 3PO, right? This, this is, yeah. This is the one. This dude. That's fucking Yeah, rad. I kind of sort of, I kept this out of my kid's hands because, because uh, of that. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's also, fairly it's, sacred. it's chrome, too, so it's going to fucking flake. You know it's going to eventually. Oh, sure, yeah. Like, it's going to fuck up. Um... Yeah, so anyway, so the prequels come out, right? And I'm I'm in. I'm going to Toys R Us. I'm doing all the shit. Mm-hmm. The movie doesn't even come out. I'm at Midnight Madness at Toys R Us looking for a Darth Maul. Because that's sure. the most gangster shit I've ever seen. Because he's cool. Like, they show that scene in the trailer where the doors fucking open. And the one lightsaber blade goes. And then the second lightsaber goes. Yeah. And when you're about 17 in 1999, that is... Your world is rocked. Mm-hmm. You're like... Oh, I was like, too. That's that who I want to be. Those, those, like, those trailers were good. Oh, my God. And Duel of the Fates. Like, it's I've heard it too many times now. Mm-hmm. But, like, at the time, it was like, oh, this is a big fucking deal. And I'm already like, you could give me anything, dude. Like, they didn't give a shit. There was no Star Wars Lego, really, at that, like... Well, the, it happened. It happened. Year. Yeah. It happened. Right then. Right then. And I was like, oh, shit, there's Darth Maul as a Lego figure. Mm-hmm. Like, this could fucking happen. I bought... And the, you know my love of the small sets. They gave you a Darth Maul small set, which is fucking oh, amazing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They it was did. him and Qui-Gon or somebody. That's right. And, it, and it, I think it had the bike, which is like... Yeah. That's the fucking greatest part. So, like, every part with Darth Maul, to this day, amazing. Like, yeah. that movie exists because of that. Like, I will forgive everything because I'm an apologist because of that. Hmm. So, I go to Toys R Us I, I, at midnight I have not with my movies. mom. I buy a fuck ton of episode one figures. There's yeah. a bunch that I can't get, but, you know, whatever. I did the same. I bought like, a Like, we, we go crazy. I bought all four battle droid 
paint jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yellow one, the, mm-hmm. the one with the splats, the whatever. Yeah. like The dirty one. Yeah, you know? and all of this is before the fucking movie has even come out. Yeah, good thing for them. <laughs> yeah, so I, I kept those on the card. I kept them through college. I kept them at my fucking studio apartment. Were they on I, the wall at any point? Uh, they were on pegboard when I was in high school. I had these black pieces of pegboard that somehow I just fucking found somewhere. Yeah. And I, I bought pegs for them and I fucking hung my like three sheets of episode one in the package figures. Um, oh, so going back to... Yeah, that's pretty nerdy. It, man, this is going to be the most disjointed episode. So sorry guys, just follow the madness. This is part Jawas of the story. Now. So, the, the only carded figures I have left, one of them is a pair of Jawas mm. that I got signed by one of the Jawa actors That's at Comic-Con. Good. Yeah, keep that one. And I made him sign it, Utini, and he was like, no problem. He was this little midget dude. He was super cool. And I was like... That's awesome. That's fucking rad. So, and I, I love, love that set. Like, this, this two-pack. Are... You got two figures? Like, normally you get one figure, but then you get two, and it's fucking amazing. So... Jawas I'm, are the shit. I'm in. I'm fucking crazy. I buy a fucking Darth Maul bald cap, and I paint my face, and I okay. build my own costume, and I buy the double-sided lightsaber. I had these boots, these like thigh, like fucking knee-high boots from Walmart wow. that were rubber. <laughs> I wait seven hours in line for the premiere with all of my friends and my mom. Were you like, wearing this stuff? I was in full face paint. Like, we go in, it, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Wow. That movie is terrible. That movie is terrible. <laughs> At the time, it was fucking the greatest. Like, being in that theater, every time they revealed something. Like, we, the, the fucking Sam person sniping the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, anything. Anything that kind of, like, tied anything back, you were like, holy shit. And then fucking Darth Maul. Any, anything with Darth Maul, fucking everybody went crazy. Uh huh. That it is was, that, that. I remember seeing Star Wars in 1977. You know when it was, had been out for a couple of months, and that's what it was like. People would boo and hiss when Darth Vader came on the screen. They would yeah, clap when yeah. the Death Star. It was up. it was insane. And then I'm 17. I'm working at a fish taco restaurant that's in the same parking lot as a movie theater. Mm. And my best friend Hunter, works who at works at the fish taco place. Oh, I thought he worked at the theater. No, that would have been beautiful. Yeah. We did know people that worked at the theater. But we would go to work. My buddy Jeff, same dude. He worked at a theater. And we, we traded pizza for movies. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah. I delivered so pizza. Like, yeah, it's, that's the, the teenage barter system. Shadow like, economies. I yeah. love it. We, we love traded it. fish tacos for pizza a lot. There you go. Um, shout out to high school pizza friends. Shout out to crappy jobs where you do the best dude, you can. Like I ate so much free fucking pizza in high school. That's what I you knew, do. I, did, I had four friends that all worked at the same fucking Papa John's. So I was like, what are we doing tonight? I don't know, we're watching a movie. Somebody's working, right? Right. And then just fucking somebody shows up and it's like, here's the pizza, it's free. And we would, like, it was like, when, amazing. You, when you go to the supply room to make a deli sandwich for yourself and you use about like twice as much of the ingredients as the customers yeah, get when yeah. they come in, you know? I, I was, uh... Because you're a teenager and you just take things? Well, well, and also like, if you're a smart teenager... You take things? Well, so I, I don't... I, people will frown on this, and I'm going to admit some dark shit, because we're talking about high school and Star Wars and, yeah, I don't you know, that. some shit. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Statue of Limitations is not going to cover this. So, like, where I worked, <laughs> you could pay whatever amount for whatever burrito, like, per the menu or whatever. Well, you could buy, you know, like, a bowl, and it was, like, a $9 bowl or something. Or you could order a side of rice, which was 99 cents. And add extra lettuce, which was free, and extra salsa, which was free, and then this much for chicken. And basically, you could get a eight dollar meal for like two seventy five if you hack the cash register in the correct order with all the things. And then the cooks would go, "What the fuck is this?" And I would go, "Don't worry about it. I'll make it." And I'd just go back there and make my lunch, okay. and it was amazing. Um, so anyway, so I saw episode one. That is the, the like, least diabolical scam I've ever heard. Yeah, it's, it's really not hurting anybody. And I was getting paid minimum wage. The statute of limitations? And whatever. Jesus. So I saw episode I, one in the theater. That was, that was some drama I thought Fucking 500 on. times. Okay, sure. Like a million times. Mm-hmm. Because we would just work four hours slinging fish tacos. And then Hunter and I would go, well, it's, it's four. 
There's a 415. Nice. Let's just go, right? And, and the Hunter was cool, man. He had a Pontiac Grand Am, which was a fucking terrible car, and it was tan. It was this ugly, ugly old man car, but we fucking mobbed around like motherfuckers. And we, that was my first, like, toy run buddy. Nice. Where okay, we, would, sure. we would drive to Oceanside yep. fucking 30 minutes away to go scope Star Wars toys and yep. shit. That was, that was Jeff. So it's like, that, that was like my high school thing. And granted, like, we were, nine, we were, 99, we were, we were 2000 driving, was amazing. For me, it was driving to Warwick, Rhode Island to get Super Powers figures in 1985. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. 1985, 86. Um, you know, when the trailer for... The first time they showed the trailer for episode one, they showed it on Meet Joe Black. And... Oh, God, that fucking Brad Pitt movie, mm-hmm. right? And they were showing it at the beginning of the movie and also I, at the I end. I thought about paying to go I to did see that. that. Yeah. So I was working at Celebrity Deathmatch at the time. I was a few blocks away from... Um, uh, I'm spacing. This, this awesome 1,100-seat theater that used to be uh, over there. The um, big one. In Midtown. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't remember. So, it's Stone a one. Ripper. So, I buy, uh, I buy a ticket for Meet Joe Black. I watch the trailer. I run back to work. And then, I don't watch any of Meet Joe Black at all. Yeah, because then why? And then, I, I kind of... Like, I, I love that they, that's I, what they chose to pair it with. Sure, why not? Like, nowadays, they would be like, okay, so we're going to reveal the Infinity War trailer with something that might be thematically connected. Right. But then they're going to be like, actually, 12 Days a Slave, that's what we're going to put the trailer in with. Yeah, like, that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, like, come on now. Um, but I, I, I ran back. I timed it, and I ran back to the theater to see if I could catch the ending one. And I run in, and, and I, I see people leaving. I'm like, I'm, I, might, I might be good if they're, okay. you know, if the credits yeah, are still yeah. rolling. So I go over to the, the security guard who's watching people exiting, and I'm like, hey, they're showing the Star Wars trailer again after the credits are over. I want to go in. I have a ticket for this showing. I want to go in and watch it. And I'm trying to explain to him what's going on. And he's just going, yeah, and the movie's over. Yeah, the movie's over. And you're you know, like, get out of the and way. I just, <laughs> I, yeah, basically, I basically just blew past him and <laughs> ran up the stairs. And and did I? It, I succeeded. I the credits were still rolling, and I saw the the trailer both times nice. for my for my nice. money. And I've never yet actually seen Meet Joe Black. So yeah. But even in that first trailer, when my friend Sam saw the trailer for the first time, he missed the very beginning and walked in just as Jar Jar Binks was getting electrocuted by the pod racer. Oh okay. And he said, yeah. "This is a fucking shit show." <laughs> so he goes, "My first impression of this movie was that it was a wily creature," coyote. is what he said. <laughs> yeah, wily coyote crossed with like. Uncle Remus. Yeah. So, yeah, for real. Yeah, so the, the prequels were, were never good. Dude, movie. so we we watched this movie over and over again, uh-huh. and we would stay till the very end, because after the credits, after all the fucking shit, you got to hear Darth Vader breathe once, or twice. It was like a... <sighs> maybe, maybe twice? And that was it. So it was like, you sit through fucking 40 minutes of end credits yeah, because that movie's like 80% CGI. Right, right, right. So it's like, here's the digital artist yeah, unit. Right. <laughs> here's, and now everybody like, it's like that fucking shit out. Star to Destroyer yeah. flying over, except it goes in slow motion. Yep. Like, so it, we were just fucking nerds. And so at the time, I thought it was the greatest shit ever. And then... I became a little bit older, and granted, I was in a weird place in my life. I was seventeen. I was well, like graduating I, I high it was a, school. It was an like, odd thing that the Matrix came out that same year. Well, so the Matrix and Fight Club oh, that yeah, year yeah. was revolutionary mm-hmm. for me. Like sure. that, it, it that kind of like formed a lot of my personality. It was like those those four th- or three things plus Gross Point Blank is basically my high school self. Okay, like it's it's a weird thing. So. We, I was obsessed. So John Cusack dressed up in a Darth Maul costume. I wore I wore a black tie and all black to to school with a fucking briefcase because I thought that was cool. I was I was a weird fucking kid. Dude. Okay. It was, yeah. I was like cosplaying before there was a word for cosplay, and I I wasn't even really cosplaying. I just really wanted to live in a fantasy world. Um, so yeah, I dressed up as Darth Maul. I, all, and, res- uh, all respect to that. I, and, and like all this shit kind of like makes sense, right? So like, I'm I'm all in. I spent all this money. I spent all this like devotion. I'm fully in. Episode two comes out. What two years later? No, it's always three. Three. So at that point, I'm in college now. It's 2002. I'm banging girls. It's it's less important. Like I've kind of moved on, and it's not that good. So I see it with my ex girlfriend or whatever, and like it's okay. And then episode three comes out, and by that point, I'm like 
seeing a different girl, I go see that. Dude, so the Matrix and the prequels are both trilogies, right? Correct. And you can chart my, like, weird love life at that point in my life because it was, like, no girl made it through all three movies. <laughs> <laughs> there were different girls for different movies. Wow. And in episode one of all three franchises... Do you, you have a little list of... There's all the, a zero. All the, all, all, all the trilogies that have uh, you and Katie have, have watched together? Oh, well, we've watched, like, dude, like, we... Like, like, shout out to the wifey. I'm married six years this year. Been with her over a decade. We have seen more media than like anybody. Like, if cool. because she's watched every Star Trek ever, oh, right which on. means I've probably seen about seventy five percent. She's seen every Stargate SG one. Like, she loves episodic shit. Just goes all in. No kidding. Like, I, I don't know. It's that. it's funny because she doesn't like any of this like kitschy nerd shit. I'm like, oh, you're into this? Let's get an action figure of that. She's like, no, I don't. I don't want that crap. But I'm like. But you watch fucking fifty hours of this, and she's like, "But that's what I like. I like I like yeah. watching one and then clicking next and watching the next one and like." I remember when uh, it's the, it's weird. It's so different than my fandom. Well, when like, when Playmates was making uh, the bad Star Trek toys. No, 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 no. Later when they're making the Simpsons figures. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I like a lot of the Playmates Star Trek toys, but that'll be for the Star Trek episode. Uh, I, I realized after buying all of Wave One and Wave Two that I didn't really need a Grandpa Simpson figure. Like I love this character, but I don't. I don't need a little toy of him. Yeah, and I yeah. think what well, I, I, I feel like that's a, a slice of your wife's experience, but hers is obviously well. And like uh, we're pandemic. we're we're weird and nuanced nerds, so like I don't really <laughs> yeah. need human action figures in general. Humans are the most boring type of toy to me. That's why I'm like, like a dude. dude? Is really boring. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be. He's got to be in armor. He's got to. He's got to look wacky as yeah. shit. He's got to be like this. He's got yeah. have four arms. That's cool, right there, dude. Yeah. So like this guy. Oh, that one's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can't. I love. Say I love that. That's so like long. still got the five POA kind of weird fucked up articulation. Oh, like, new. Ch- yeah. Yeah. He comes with a chair. So how how is that packaged? Is it with others, right? Yeah, this it's is like part a of a three pack. He has a big blue overcoat that I choose to not. And that is him. correct me if I'm wrong. That's a episode one it is. Jedi Council. Yeah. Number. No, no, incorrect. He is hanging out with a Watto and a Twi'lek chick on, oh, uh, watching okay. the pod race. I actually modified the fuck out of this guy's neck because he was looking down. He was like really. really oh good. yeah, because yeah. so well, I, I mean he's huge in comparison. Yeah, like look at well, this dude. But he's, he's what the like, fuck, bro? Yeah, well, Get uh, off me! Yeah. Oh, that just reminded me of a cool thing. Um, yeah, this is a really cool figure. So I obviously I can't totally diss episode one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there's so many good things that came out of it, and we've talked about the pod race, so I don't think we need to reiterate the mm. conversation. No. But like Darth Maul, the fucking ship design, Doug Chiang. He's the man. So the only I got a, I got other a couple card items in here. You're like this thing. Yeah, dude. You know that is. Dude, bitchy. I loved this, and then out of this pours the MTT. This and out of the MTT pours a rack of droids. Oh yes, out of you mean? Oh, does it have one? It does. It's so awesome. Oh what god damn it! And this is this is action fleet, right? Yeah, little slidey thing. Oh, dude, that's that, money. What's cool is if this one comes off. Yeah. And oh, then I, there's another one. I don't think the one Galoob, that comes Galoob out. is so fucking yeah, they, gangster. They were man. they were kicking butt for a while. That is a, yeah, that thing is beautiful. Yeah. So, like there's detailing on the bottom of this, and it's tiny. It's it's a micro yeah, machine. It's wicked small. It's it's when micro machines were like hitting their stride. Like Galoob went crazy for a while, and it was yeah, it was a delight yeah. to see. And this this guy actually, what I mean, if you were alive in 1999 you saw the the bomb of star wars toys i mean like it was like a virus like star wars toys were just everywhere and then i mean this was in the in the movie for fucking five seconds yeah like, and it blew up speaking of the bomb but this is amazing like i fucking the, um, love this well in the, in the later wave of action fleet toys like nobody carried them because all the retailers were like fuck you <laughs> you know um and that thing is great here's my star wars sketchbook Oh, nice. Yeah, like this came out, nice. like, you know, when Star Wars was the only Star Wars movie, which is why it's not called the New Hope Sketchbook. 
Um, <laughs> and here's a concept drawing oh, for shit. the blockade runner. Like here's the one. That, this, wow. this one's closer to how it actually turned out. Okay, it had a hammerhead. But look, look at this guy over here. Three yeah, big uh, engines on the back. That right yep, there. Kaboom. It, you know. And this this toy. I mean, I also love this action right around the radar dishes. Dude, the the it's all totally Mobius in there. The sculpted texture, then, like right on the top, like all this shit. Yep. And then look at this. Oh fuck! There's like this no little way. Slidey engine piece. I'm, I'm wow, just, that is gangster. Yeah, isn't that great? Oh man, that like even on camera, that looks great. Yeah, it's fun. This is a great toy. Action fleet toys are the yeah, shit. Galoob was awesome. So I got a whole bunch like on the table in front of me. That's so. the stuff that I sold that I'm really bummed about. I had a bunch of the micro heads. That were just, they came with one fig. So you got like a Boba Fett head. I never, I, ooh, you know, I, I really, because they did a lot of characters that were pretty obscure. I, I thought about. I, I looked them up the other night. I never went down that hole. There's, there's a European release that we never got. So there's a European release of like all these weird shit, like 2-1-B, the medical droid. Oh, wow. Like really weird fucked up characters. Um, so like the most that we got that was weird was like we got a Bith dude who was, you know, playing the band mm -hmm. thing or something. Um, there was Akbar and Greedo. And yeah, like, yeah. Like, like I, I mean, I had, and they all came in like three packs, but then in the European portion, they just fucking went crazy. I'm really relieved my dog's sleeping, which means she's not destroying shit. Yes. So, so uh, you know, it, I feel like uh, getting a dog kind of Preps you a little bit more as an adult. Like you gotta fucking pay attention to shit now. It's true. Yeah. Before it was just willy nilly Lego everywhere. Now it's uh oh my god, are you mm -hmm. eating that? Mm -hmm. Um. So anyway, yeah. So like fucking the prequels happen. It's a big deal. And then sort of like I age through the prequels, and then you know I graduate college, and I I sort of fall out. I put all the Star Wars shit in a bin. And I'm kind of like, man, it's it's so shitty. Like, uh, like, but then you know, every once in a while, like the OG trilogy shit, like, kind of comes back. So I'm gonna show my favorite Star Wars toy of all time. And I got this when I was 16, 17 for ten dollars on clearance. Nice. And this is the best thing ever. It's, I'm a little jealous. I never had this toy, dude. It's fucking awesome. It comes with. The both the dudes, the oh, driver I and the gunner. That. I remember that. Yeah. Like exclusive. Like it has lights and sounds. And there's one that's way better, that's way bigger, that was fucking amazing, that has the bikes and the, the ass and stuff. But this one, like it's ass full bikes. it's full of nostalgia and it's also the size of my dog. So <laughs> it's really good. Well, maybe it's a little smaller. But yeah, I mean it's big, it's a pet size fucking it's a toy. Pet size toy. So and that. I got it. For ten dollars, like, it, I feel like an asshole. I feel like the, you know, it's like people, people kind of always ask that question, like, hey, if you had a time machine, you could go fucking change one thing, and it's like, could I prevent my parents' divorce, or could I bought four ten dollar <laughs> ATATs? <laughs> oh, I don't know, bro. <laughs> um, and the the fucking ATAT is the shit. So. Here's my weird thing, right? So I'm I'm all in, and then I'm all out. You know, I, I fucking sell a bunch of shit, and I just keep this stuff in my in-laws' fucking garage, and then like a closet. Mm -hmm. And I and Katie's like, "What is all this stuff?" And I'm like, "It's all Star Wars bullshit." And she's like, "You have three bins of Star Wars shit?" And I'm like, "Yeah, just don't worry about it. It's fine." I have talking banks. I have fucking Queen Amidala dolls. I have just fucking garbage. I have like, but some of it's cool. I have the some of it is cool, dude. I this is of all the collection shit that I have that I should put out. I have the full complete episode one fast food collaboration oh, mural. Oh shit! Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, KFC. I caved on that. I got about a third of the way through, and I, I my mom like, was done. a champ, okay. dude. She for some reason, you know, it's Wait, like, what, it was pizza. What were the three? Taco Bell. KFC Pizza Hut. I can't remember, but one of those was... I lived in Manhattan at the time, and one of those was impossible to find in Manhattan. Oh, I think really? It was Pizza Hut. We drove a lot. My yeah. mom drove all over the place for us to fucking be like, which ones do you yeah. have? And I then we just I buy Manhattan. all this shit. So I, I have the full set. It's, it's really cool. I can make the yeah. mural. That is impressive. Oh, but... And also, one of the best toys from that is the Cloud City 
on a magnet. Oh, yeah, Which yeah. is also, in addition to being, like, a really awesome toy, it's, it's one of the, it's on model, which is weird because I happen to have a bin of micro machines right here. Okay, this right here. That's Cloud City, but it's Cloud City based on one of the Ralph McQuarrie um, sketches. Sketches. Yeah. It doesn't look yeah. like this in the movie. Because it's thinner, right? It's, it's it's the city is much smaller compared to all the jazz on the top. You don't have these big big balconies on the side. It is, yeah. It's an impression of yeah. a much much larger object. Um, also, the stem is longer. Yeah, right? it's got more of a taper, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I think I may have lost mine recently. My my fast food. Oh, one. your fast food. I, I had one. it at work, and now I can't find it, so I might have to buy a new one. I, I it's like that's the thing that I'm holding on to. That I'm just like, yeah. So there's some cool I, shit in this bin. I got bins and bins of cool shit. Like, yeah, this guy. fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Every time I go to Jeff's house, we oh, kind of like always look. have this moment. Here's another one. What? <laughs> yeah. What? This is the glue one. That's a model kit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that comes from a snap. Dude, so this is the glue one though. Yeah, it's awesome. Dude, it was oh, man. no, no, no. But it was marketed not like the action figure vehicles, but like there was a Millennium Falcon that like hinged open. Does it? Does it open? Uh, this one just pops open, right? Uh, oh, I, I see the pressure thing. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and that becomes like a little action scene. There's oh like fuck! All kinds of cool shit in there. That is legit. Yeah, it's like, it's like here, here's a little. You know, there's a little ramp going up and these super Fuck yeah, bitchin' man. stickers. Galoob, and... Galoob used to be so cool. You know what? So I bought this because it was yeah, all $5 all this on clearance. Fun. So here's here's kind of where this story becomes current. So <laughs> Thank God. Episode 7 comes <laughs> out. Everybody's hyped. I'm cynical as fuck. Didn't want to buy the race speeder set. Didn't want to buy the race speeder set. Didn't it, well, what, And there were multiple reasons. One, I built the race speeder before there was a race speeder set. As did okay. Paul Lee. Yeah, fuck Star Wars, but so, I built this by myself. Yeah, 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 from a from a yeah. trailer. Yeah, because you know, uh, I I hate all this shit. Clearly. Right. Um, <laughs> so imitation so I'm like, is the highest I'm form like, of hatred. Kind of, we watch it. We go see it a couple of times in the theater. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed, really. I hate fucking emo Vader. He's the worst part of it. And, and like I like that guy. And there's like just Kylo there's this, this massive like now you know the first time I went to Vegas he is emo. But I like the first him. time I went to Vegas for the first seven hours I thought it was magical, and then the fog of illusions sort of wears thin, mm -hmm. and you go like everything's manipulating me to spend money and uh, just be a, a consumer whore. You say that like it's a bad and, thing. And so that's I, I realize this is happening right like Force Friday happens. And I go on like for Saturday, and I'm like, okay, whatever. So I got this because it's on clearance. This is the uh, oh. the modern, okay, you know, um, thing. This is bullshit. What the fuck is this? Like, yeah, it, like dude, this is kind of whack, and this okay. thing is whack in comparison to the old ones and the old R2. I'm pretty sure it was a full round. Oh, that's it didn't oh, have this that's fucking lame. like you get you get what three quarters? Wow, of R2? wow, like, that sucks. I'm glad I got this on okay. clearance. I keep this in the bar, flat against the wall. You know why? Because it's flat. Because it's flat. It's, this is bullshit. That sucks. Yeah, okay, I have the same problem with um, well, at least the the one Lego Star Destroyer set that I have. Same problem. They don't the the wedge doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. It's like it bottom it flattens out. And I get why, because it'll be, like flunk back and forth, but I, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. So Galoob used to be the shit. Galoob, the new Galoob, or whatever the fuck this is. I don't know. If we're gonna so talk this, this kind of like speaks to my thing. So I'm I'm righteously disappointed. We're gonna talk about Galoob later. In a lot of ways. Righteously. So I'm like I'm I'm burnt out, and then yeah, my friend Jordan said I am like George Lucas has had real estate in my brain. For too long, and he, I'm evicting him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of just like, ah, oh, the hype, like oh, back too far. so much shit. But then, Rogue One happens, and I'm, I'm all about Rogue One, man. You just give me Darth Vader murdering motherfuckers. Is that when you went crazy? Is yeah. that when you went Star that's, Wars crazy? That's, that's what kicked all back of, in. Because um, all of a sudden, kicked like after, after this, like I have to get Andrew the set so just, just so he has these dark so, red arch pieces. Uh, he's sending the group texts. He's sort of like. It's like, oh, look at this Black Series I'm, Star Wars figure I got. Look yeah. at this other stuff, you know. I, I, I bought all these six-inch Black Series figures. Yeah. And, like, the great thing is, all the Force Awakens shit went on deep clearance. Ooh. All the Rogue One shit is on clearance. I love this. This is... 
fucking amazing. It's an accurate, screen accurate model. This is not screen accurate, but it's fun. Yeah. I like that. It's got a satisfying click. And like, the is Ray it? is 5 POA, which is bullshit. She should have a head swivel. But it's fine. Yeah, it works. Like she's not looking where she's going. Yeah, yeah. But then like, this, I got for fucking $20 at Walmart. And this is great. I'm going to hang it from the ceiling next to my OG TIE Fighter. And, you know, it's like... The Lego set of that is uh, overpriced, but it's oh, really it's, it's cool. good. It's good. I got it's to build... Really good. I, I, I built one for my, uh, Brian Hines, and he gave me all the figures in return. Speaking and, of Brian Hines, the one. shout out to that dude who gave me this, like, fucking years ago. What is that thing? This is a Death Star that turns into yeah. Darth Vader. Oh. I would, it's, I would it's like a to transformer. See that. Um, the Darth Vader's terrible. It's missing a foot. It's also missing a bunch of panels and shit. Okay. Um, so I'm not gonna transform it because it's it's whack. But I okay. like this. I also kind of like that it's got Death Star landing gear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it can sit on a shelf. Wow. What's great is I, I just put my Rogue One three and three quarter inch action figures on front okay, of this, sure, and sure, it looks sure. like a nice little background piece. And That's I'm like, cool. it's a robot in disguise. Well, while we're talking Death Star, um, let me show you something cool I brought. Well, two things. This is not the Death Star, but a buddy of mine. This is legit. This is like... So I, I work with these dudes who've been in the model building business for way longer than me, and they've been on the West Coast for way longer than me. So uh, my buddy at work got buddy, buddy. a bunch of um, uh, reject cast parts of an actual production model of a TIE fighter um, from somebody he knew. And he cleaned up the, the, the casts, made a new batch of molds, and then he and some friends made you know new casts, and they put together these really cool TIE fighters. And I've seen these. They're, the finished thing is super big. Um, this is a re second generation reject cast. So this thing has got, if you got really close to it, you see there's some, there's some flaws, but what you also see is that it's really freaking cool. You know, so this is an actual, you're basically looking at contours that were on actual production models at ILM. I'm not sure for which movie, but it's pretty neat. Um, and part of the history of this is that the, uh, texture for the solar panels on the original models came from some weird air conditioned venting that was plentiful in the 70s but is really really hard to find now um so that's kind of cool and then the same dude one day brought in a mold oh shit for this wow. which is this freaking cool now so what yeah, is here, this we got we, you gotta, yeah. Yeah, we gotta do some it. justice look at that shit now we are not sure what this comes from. It could be like a garage kit um, or something. This is resin, right? Yeah, that's a resin cast off a of silicone mold. But see this part right he here? Right right there? Those, those like, ah, shit. These, the four, these four. The, like, the four things? Okay, check this out. Joe Johnson designed four. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and there's other, basically there's five models in the Star Wars sketchbook. So, see those. Like, yeah, and see that big hemi-circular right thing? Like, check this out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so these are obviously, it's Death Star, but I don't, I don't know what this comes from. Wow. At all. But it's really fun. God, it's holding, like, a piece of resin, like, it's, it's super scary because I'm terrified I'm going to break it. It's, but uh, it's, it is it's, legit. It's really Like, solid. the. The texture on this is fucking amazing. Anyway, this is wow, as you good a time as any. Cool shit, dude. Yeah. Um, this is Andrew's birthday present. Not this bag, but what's inside. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, our, our birthdays are fairly close together. If I'm fairly close, I mean months together. And we've been, we've been trying to get together. I mean, we have hung out, but we've been trying to do this. Holy shit, dude. Wow. That's the bottom. This is fucking amazing. So this is a whole slab of that, it's, and it's and it's painted and weathered <laughs> and fucking beautiful. When you showed me your desk and you had all the little black series diecast yeah, chips, yeah, and I had this cast, or I had, oh, you know, we had this mold. Oh man, I was like, I want to make him one of these. So there you go. Yeah. yeah Boom. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! This is fucking legit. Wow, so is this is this is resin as well? It's resin, and then this is MDF, which is like, okay, it's like yeah, particle yeah, board. Like particle and this, board. This is, just, and this is just a piece of wood. Fuck yeah, dude. This is legit. 
Man, thank you, bro. You're welcome. This is fucking awesome. I'm glad you think so. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'm all about it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh-oh. And I, I took some pictures with my iPhone that were close enough that it was it filled the entire frame. Yeah, and yeah. It looks really cool, you know, because because you can tell it's the floor and the well, wall. Well, and even like so, it's it's clearly the Death Star and it's clearly Star Wars, but yeah. even just like photographing micro scale anything against that is it, it's great. I'm, I'm psyched it's, to see what you do with it. It's actually. generic Greedle background. I, I meant to grab you some uh, plexiglass raw, but I forgot. Oh no! So, worries. You know, no later. Worries. Yeah. Anyway, we got we got plenty of time. Happy birthday! Thanks, bro. Well, Thanks, I got bro. a bunch of cool action for you shit in front of me, so I thought yeah. So let's let's talk about that because every time. So before you jump into that, I mm. just want to tell the audience kind of what it is to experience going to your house. Oh, okay. Sure. Which is like you roll up, and Jeff has a detached garage, which is the Lego Man Cave, and yeah. you know it's got some action figures and some toys and shit. But then if you go through your house, your kid has this amazing playroom. And in this playroom is all the shit. Every time, like, what happens is I hang out in the garage, I drink mm-hmm. a bunch of beer, and then I have to pee. And I... I don't have a bathroom out I, there. I try not to pee in the backyard like an animal. <laughs> so I go inside, and when I go inside, I tend to walk through your kid's playroom in the middle of the night. Yep. And I see, like, action fleet, starship troopers, fucking, like, shit that I'm like... Oh man, this is amazing! And your kid just has it like he's, fucking strewn about with his other shit. And he's really good. He's really careful. I, well, I've like you know, it's it's really amazing that your yeah. kid plays with like thirty year old toys. Yeah, and he's a lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he knows how lucky he is. You know, I mean, because I had my toy collection in the closet, and he would just always, when, in, in our apartment before we had the garage, and he was just like, I when he was little, he'd go, I want to see something from the closet, and. The magical for, for, closet. For a really long time, I could find something he'd never seen before. So yeah, it was oh, kind dude, of like this crazy. I, I love the the canopy action on this. I oh, have oh, check out the landing gear too. I oh, have wait, the. Maybe, I think it's that one. Yeah, I maybe. have the three and three quarter inch version of this. Um, one of the awesome things that that they started doing was the uh, Alpha. Oh, the you the evolved right. one, right? Well, no, you what you, it, would, it was like a lot of it was repaints. It was like, oh, they already released the B wing. But here, buy another B wing with this, with this with this mini proto B wing. I love this. It's yeah, like it looks like a gangster. flying wing from World War II, and there's another canopy I love in the, the bottom. Turbine in it. Yeah, like, yeah, it's really tasty. Here's the snow speeder. Oh, which dope. The idea was they were made from Y wing cockpits. Yeah, yeah. You know, and but the, and like the back kind of looks like how the back went. Here's the Proto Cloud Car, which is got to- which is like totally Buck Rogers. Dude, I, I love that because that screams like 80s Transformers to me. Yeah. And then when they did and episode... This is the and there, oh, yeah, that's the Teddy Arum shuttle with its little sphere. I love, I love the spear on there. And that's another um, design that I think Clone Wars used. Yeah, that well, same well design Clone, Clone, Wars, Clone Wars and Rebels are just straight up being like, hey, bro, we were there. We're your age. We, we know what you fucking lost it out there. Here you go. So then... Oh, shit, they did, what the fuck is that? I'll, I'll get to it. They did they did another round of Alpha Team, but this time they were like, let's make the proto version the big ship. So here's the proto... Oh, Naboo dude. Fight. Yeah. Wow, that's way Isn't fucking that cool. Isn't that crazy crap? And wait, there's some... Oh, yeah, look. You spin the, you spin the little oh, canopies God on this damn, little, little greeble-filled... Thing pops out. Yeah, these are actually pretty expensive on eBay. Um, but wow, then that's my cool. favorite I, one. I gotta check this shit out. This is the Proto Droid Fighter. Oh, dope! Yeah, I love the giant engine on that. Yeah, giant engine on the front. There were twin mounted guns in these slots just flanking the engine. I took them out because they were made of rubber. Um, let's see. There's a little. Just there's this look, at, look at that. Look at that quality of that sculpting greeble. Yeah. When it focuses eventually. Um, oh shit! Yeah, isn't that cool? This little thing that comes out here. There's 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 fun landing gear, you know. That's like kind of. There's something about the this, quality of this. plastic too, like the materials. These I are built so well. Love Action Fleet. Um, oh wait, and then how does this work? There's a thing. Yeah, here we go. You pull the back. And oh, the canopy's open. Dope. I mean, look at this. This is a fucking flying saucer. This is a Star Wars toy, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, It's gorgeous, and um, and also, and and so, so that's you know a cool mystery item. But you know, this right here, this is one of my favorite toys ever. Yeah. You know, and it's I mean, it's got all kinds of crazy playability actions 
there's like a little. I love I love how like up here. it's they're they're small, but they're not too small. They feel like the perfect size. Well, like, what's funny about this? So Galoob is doing this, and they're doing micro machines, and also diecast. Because you know, like what I like oh, is you I can, have, you can, there's the diecast, and there's the micro sand machine. crawlers all the way down. Make them like a family, you know. Oh, nice. Um, um, so so back to Jawas. So yeah, back to Jawas. I see Rogue One. And I start going crazy, and oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm buying all this shit, right? And what I what I'm doing is basically really? it's, just, it's just been since Rogue One, so well, like pretty much six, yeah. eight months or ish. Yeah, right. yeah. Like it's, I mean, like I've always had Star Wars shit around, but I, I haven't been like what you've been seeing is the post Rogue One awesomeness. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I go to the show Robo Toy Fest. Uh, shout out to Scott, and there's a dude Scott. who just has a whole booth of Star Wars shit. It's all Power of the Force stuff. I didn't even know this was a thing. It's a two-pack. You get oh, yeah. a third sculpt of the Jawa. Like, look at the glowing eyes, bro. Well, and they yeah. have and they have hoods. Yeah, they have so hoods. So the eyes are automatically. But, so this is this is working. the OG, which is has that fucking weird Jedi counselor, you know, waistband. Know, yeah, right. Which is like whatever, you know. This is bullshit. This has a waist swivel, and it and it has. Individual legs underneath. Like, the sculpt is so much better. And it's awesome. And then if you get the Ronto, you get another version. And of the then drama. it comes with this, dude. Oh, God which God. is fucking... Like, this is what I want. I want dumb <laughs> boxes with legs from yeah. the 70s. Yeah. Like, I want all, all the Star Wars shit. Like, there's some good new stuff. Like, this is for Force Awakens. I love this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This is great. That dude's awesome. This is Force Awakens. I love this dude. Fucking, he's great. But the real shit, and this is where my wife... I, I told you I've been annoying my wife a lot, right? So they put Rogue One on fucking Netflix. Mm. So we watch it, like, all the time. Like, oh, just cool. somehow it just happens. And every time I'm like, you know who's my favorite character? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you fucking told me this already. <laughs> Yo, okay, so... This used to be the man... You know who the man is now? Motherfucking two tubes, bitch. He is the man. And I'm sure he's dead because he was on fucking Jetta when it got yeah, nuked. Yeah. But he might have gotten away. This motherfucker crawled out of the Sarlacc. I'm assuming this dude just had a teleporter. Like, they, they don't even have teleporters in the Star Wars universe. And he's like, well, I had the first. <laughs> like, and then. <laughs> Something I've been working on. My second favorite of all time is Moroff. Like,. I, I want to just hang out. War with, Wampa. Yeah, I want to hang out with, like, fucking the dirty, like, Jedi rebels. Like, hmm. that is that is a weird scene, dude. There's fucking the... It was one of the scenes in the movie that... Like, she's walking in there and it's all, like, like crummy stone archways and, 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 like, ribbed tubes. And I, I, it was this moment I just like, oh my god, they, they, they just nailed Star Wars. Well, right it's, it's Jabba's it's, palace, but it's Jabba's... Analog on another planet. Like, there's always fucked up shady people in the Star Wars universe, but Saw Gerrera is doing it for the right reasons. Right, right. Maybe? I don't know. It's ambiguous. Like, everything about Rogue One I fucking love. Like, the I I like that, number one, they all die. That's yeah. the thing that I like the Spoiler most about it. Alert. Um, yeah, and if you haven't seen it by now, yeah, what the fuck, fuck you? And, and, no way. And that no should way. be a selling point. That should be a fucking yeah, selling point. Yeah, that's true. Right, they all fucking die. And like, I, I like all the characters. The droid is great. K2SO is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I have the six inch series. I have the fucking three and three quarter inch series. I, I've i been tempted. They make they make like two other sizes, right? They make a 12 inch, an 18 inch, and then like the fucking 24 inch. And they're, they're all on clearance. Uh -huh. And I've been telling my wife, we don't have like a dish towel or, or a hand towel holder in that bathroom and i'm like i'll just buy a two foot k2so and he can just hold the towel it'll be great and she's like no it's not happening so uh like shout out to the eiffel tower that stayed in the bathroom for fucking five seconds yeah over there. there's a big bin of um, uh unsorted lego in there right now I'm yeah that. well yeah we'll take a picture of that shout out to uh the wife he's not home right now <laughs> dun, dun, dun. dun 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 the mice will play dun, dun, dun. All right, uh, I'm still nice though. so let's let's talk about a few more Star Wars things. I'm buying a whole bunch of shit from back in the day. So like, oh yeah, he's Move great. Talk, yeah, Move Talk's fucking game. Action Fleet Slave One, really good Slave One toy. 
Um, so I bought that Y-Wing on May the 4th, and I got Fingers. double points, and I got this super cool poly bag, which right. comes with this super cool R2. Yeah, some now, nice decorations on Now, this is, this is, debatably, one of the best poly bags I've ever put out. Like this? Yeah, I'm a little 70 pieces. It was exclusive, which, of course, all Star Wars bullshit's exclusive. Uh, I'll tell you a story after this. Um, it comes with this tile. Which I would like a billion of. Yeah, that's cool. But here's where they fucked up, dude. And I, I told you about this, like, I don't know, two months ago yeah. or whatever. So they printed the head, right? But they printed this little scope right there in perspective. And it fucks it up. Like, I don't understand that. Why didn't they just make it a circle? Yeah, and then one in the back, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the best video podcasting ever. There you go. You can see it's in perspective. It's fucked up when you look at it. And it's like they tried to make it 3D. And I'm like, you shouldn't have done that, asshole. It's a flat dome. Like, whatever. But it's a, it's a nitpick. This is still good. Lego Star Wars. Um, I built this recently. Yeah. So we, let's let's jump out of Star Wars. Let's just talk about some other fucking current Lego shit because there's a lot of current Lego shit going on. It was on. my birthday recently, and my uh, my wife um, just came back from a freelance job and handed me the cash that she had just made, which was yeah, yeah it was pretty great. Um, and uh, so I got this set, which I'm really digging. Um, it's one of the ones I made. In full view of my son, so it means I'm not going to be able to take it apart anyway. But I don't mind. I really the, like the snot shaping. work on the the inner slopes is really yeah, really clean. that is really good. I'm sort of tempted to brick link the parts in the sticker sheet to redo the top on the bottom. What is this fucked up thing with the dude hanging off the bottom? Oh, Can what? You... Oops, that's Bruce Banner. Oh, yeah, oh, I he, see. And he's in like he's got a Hulk. That's I'm, his, I'm about that's to his... go crazy on. Uh, uh, spoilers, what? spoilers, Thor drops Hulk off to fuck shit up in yeah. the movie. Yeah. He's um, like, yeah, Kate Blanchett, here I come. Um, I'm just, I'm, I gotta, I gotta show this fucking Anna man. Mm, mm, vintage. Mm. <laughs> it's fucking amazing, dude. This, well, that is, was a, the this is worth a lot of money. Yeah, that was the first power of the, the like the, the first power of the, the, the first wave The OG of power OG, of the force. Right, it was kind of like, it was almost as if they were saying, okay, now we've done shit tons of Star Wars figures from all the movies, so now we're just going to kind of dip back into the well and go crazy. And they made this, this wave that had a man-a-man -man and um, the Imperial Gunner, like the dudes who have the helmets. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, with the thing yeah. off. Um, um, I have a, a really nice version. So what's fucked up about... It's, it's but then, but, fucked up, but then it's Star nice. Wars figures like disappeared after that. So I bought a couple and I don't... Yeah, that one's pretty good. Dude, so this is um, the Vintage series, which is, from what I understand, you know, assholes who kept up with it, they were like, this is the best. It's removable helmet, removable vest, swivels for everything, hmm. complete articulation. Like, this is, it, it's quote-unquote super articulated, which is great, but it's just a dude with a, you know, a Death Star Gunner helmet, so how much articulation do you really need? Yeah, I this was one the Power of the Force series got really pricey, so I didn't go after them hardcore, but I did go after oh, this one. Dope. The red is really cool yeah. in the visor. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So, but there's a lot. Most of that line I do not have. I got a Man of Man. There was the first day I saw them, which was also the last day I saw them on the shelves. I got a Man of Man and one of the other ones, and I'm spacing on which one was. All right, uh, so we've been recording for roughly an hour-ish. Yeah. Um, should we bail? We should probably bail soon, but uh, do you want to talk some fucking about my seafood problem? Should we Should we Ooh, delve into yeah. that? Ninjago. So I, I... Ninjago movie. I have... Oh, man, we actually could like do a lot of shit right now. Um, so let's let's run through Ninjago quickly. So I got a bunch of sets because uh, I have a seafood problem. Yeah. And this is this is where it gets a little weird and fucked up, right? So the first one I bought was this. It's the jellyfish set. Um, it comes with a jellyfish dude. It comes with uh, some other dudes. So the jellyfish is sand blue. So PSA, it's sand blue. 
Looks dark play there. Fish. Yeah, so that's my problem, right? <laughs> Like so I bought I bought this I, I bought this set just kind of like because I saw it it was it was in Walmart it was new and I was like look at that motherfucking Mako Shark dude Is I need that together oh, that I need that together. guy I need that guy in my life and this set's really well designed oh wow it spins Ooh. which is uh, great it's That's got tasty. these well tentacle deals um you know it's got this it's it's. Pretty well done, right? And it comes with boat, boat that does not float, which is over there. Clearly says boat on the, does not float. Clearly says like right on here, like if fuck, one, fuck you, boat does not float. <laughs> um, if this weren't the Star Wars episode, but, we'd call this boat does not float. But what's fucked up, right? Is this is three hundred and forty-one pieces for thirty bucks, so it's a good deal. It's more than three hundred pieces. I'm like, cool, thirty bucks. And then I was like, oh, we got this other one. It's bomber, right? It's cool. Comes with a regular shark dude. Thirty bucks, three hundred and forty-one pieces. Makes sense. Price point. Getting a deal. Getting forty pieces for free, roughly. And then, where's that thing? You can get the Water Strider for thirty bucks, which is four hundred ninety-four pieces. <laughs> it's five hundred fucking pieces. The same price. And you get this dude, who's fucking ridiculous. This uh, pufferfish dude, who there's a visor in there. Yeah. That's a that's a clear visor in there. You can't see it because the show sucks and the production sucks. But there you go. Yeah, he's he's got a visor. Visor. You know, use your imagination. Use half. use your fishy use imagination. Your imagination. So yeah. I I went crazy and you know there's collectible minifigs and there's a fucking squid dude, the octopus dude. I love this guy. Um, oh yeah. Shout out to uh, your home movie fans. That's the Septopus right Septopus. there. Septopus. I, like, I love the hollow without the, the oh, fig yeah. head in there. He looks, it totally works. He looks so it's pissed like, off. I'm... Ah! What did you do? Ah! What did you do? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's the angler dude. It's also, actually a chick. Kind of pissed off. And she's got the mace. And that, that mace piece yeah. is fucking legit. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, a mace piece with a figure. Spoilers. So cool. Working on some other shit. Not the fish. What? What could it be? What could it be? And then I spent sixty dollars to get this crab, dude. Nice, because I'm an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and yeah. So I'll it's, show you. I'll it's show you fun the... when somebody else besides me goes minifig crazy. Although I did by myself. So the humongous next one I said. There's so I the water strider. Guy, so you know I can't. Dude, judge. that's that's legit. Yeah. The water strider. It's got a new windscreen, which is money. Uh, you can't see it because I'm failing at this there you go it's like the slave one windscreen but truncated and smaller and you get the puffer fish dude truncated means smaller um i got an extra set of these dishes and i also got three sets of the stickers in this so nice somehow the fulfillment fucked up but it's always in your favor which is nice and unless you're watching and you got the set that doesn't have those yeah if you, if you got uh zero stickers <laughs> right. and um you bought two sets and one of them neither of them had stickers and one of them and then you get you got dishes. the bomber which is great sam blue again yeah awesome um the bombs are like really satisfying like they're just big giant bombs There's they have you know, propellers, they spin. They explode things. They explode. It's a, it's a manta ray. It's great. And then, uh, the big set. This fucking, uh, Halo Needler. Spinning McSpinsters. <laughs> um, I want to, to take all those whip antennas off of this thing. It's 60 bucks. You know, besides the whip antennas, it's you, kind of cool. You get this. Which is my favorite. And the crab dude. And the crab dude. Yeah. Um, this. It's it's not bad. It's 876 pieces for 60 bucks, which is a fucking phenomenal deal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a fan. It's okay. I do feel like I have a halo gun, you know, because I, I, I even got a shooting it. I did not see that coming. <laughs> Surprise, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got a crab dude, and the crab dude's hilarious. And, uh, yeah. So that's Ninjago. Uh, the movie's coming out. I don't know. It might suck. It might not. Um, yeah, we, we tend to have our own 
sort of apprehension of the various in-house themes. Well, it works out better. And and now you understand my my deep, weird, scarred persona with pop culture, because sometimes sometimes it's fun to get crazy. It's everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes you have to paint your face like Darth Maul and wait seven hours in line. Sometimes you have to buy a lot of tiny fish hats. Yes. And then sometimes you just feel shame. <laughs> uh, anyway, Sometimes. so that's the moral of the Star Wars episode. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I do want to shout out the homie Marsan Sermalega Bros. We're gonna we're gonna go crazy here. Oh, what's, I don't know what uh, watch out! Watch out! Oh. See those okay. uh, frames up there? Uh huh. They're fucking Sermalega Bros. Prints, and they're legit. Do show from the Poland. Check out check out this, some of the shit. Oh oh, this is this is out of control. Yeah. Just look at this. <laughs> fucking toys everywhere beer stuff beers everywhere about. yeah seafood people <laughs> seafood people all up in your face oh the no 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 look at that crab dude he's fucking amazing you are proud of your um, mania. Yeah, yeah it's oh and also since we're fucking throwing shit around the room i got a new minifig thing mm. look at look at how cool this is right Check this is out. fucking legit i'm flicker all right, so uh, we're going to get out of here in a minute, but uh, Jeff's going to stall for five seconds or 10 to 15 seconds, and I'll be right back. Every toy that you see, oh, especially a TIE fighter, I was holding this up earlier, this is not on model, because the on model TIE fighters, those fins are humongous and thin, and they don't make very good toys. Um, and uh, X-Wings, actually, if you had a, I had a model kit of an X-Wing, and it was great in its way, but it was also kind of spindly, and I never really felt like swooshing it. So this is an Action Fleet X-Wing, which is a little bit buffed out because it's a toy for kids and not totally accurate. But I actually like this version of the X-Wing best. I think the little extra beef gives it a lot of punch. And you can really just imagine this thing zooming down that trench. Um, one of the reasons that the prequels disappointed us was there was no hyperspace shot. Um, and oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, because uh, in a way, Star Wars is all about like motion and speed and one of my favorite, yeah, favorite, yeah, favorite shots. Yeah, definitely. If I had a single favorite shot of the original trilogy, it's right when Ben starts, Luke's in the trench and he's about to do his thing and he's uh, and Obi-Wan shows up in his head and tells him to turn off his computer and, and somewhere in that sequence of shots when he's like, let go, um, there's a shot of the trench coming towards you, but there's no canopy. It, there's no, oh, there's it's no just, loop. It's, a it's, just, it's, just, it's just like yeah. if there was a camera on the nose of the X-Wing, right? Yeah. And it's just this pure moment of, where it's, it, it just, it's just like this, like this, this is Star Wars. Well, dude, like and every, the, the prequels had none of that. So I, I bought this uh, mail away VHS back in the day. I got, I got. A couple of things. One, uh, I bought a, three boxes of Fruit Loops to get a Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise figure. Mm, good and for I, you. Good and for I you. also, and I'm pretty sure I still have My friend this. Jeff got one of those. I have a behind the scenes making of Star Wars mail away VHS cassette. Mm, um, tasty. And they show a lot of the model work and that stop motion, and it's it's fucking amazing. That's like what Star Wars is to me. It's like yeah. there's I mean there's there's so much to it. Like this it's the story of a young man and I saw it as a young man and I evolved through it and there's fucking amazing vehicle design and music and the whole thing ties together, right? It's like all fucking perfect. And uh oh the the speaking of that motion shot. Uh here's some original Lego. Don't say we didn't give you anything. Um, <laughs> here's the Star Destroyer. See the engines? They're cool, right? It's a. Uh, it'll. It'll eventually have a thing. I, I might do a Jedha Dio. That's what I really want to do. Is to have the you know the little transport with the the Kyber crystals popping up into it with Jedha below. But but here's the thing, right? I've been building this since May the fourth. That is the perfect analogy. Because it's so big. For my entire interface with Star Wars. is like, it's it's never over, it's never complete, and it's never satisfactory by any means. But somehow, it just still keeps chugging along. So, mm. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, Jeff, you had a birthday, and I went to a place. I want to talk about the Landspeeder for a second. Because I think... 
of all, I, I'm, something's coming over here. Of all the Star Wars vehicles, I think the Landspeeder is is in a way the most evocative because this design is so goofy. These three engines, it's so Buck Rogers, but it's also the shittiest vehicle in the whole. I mean, look at this. It's it's like canon that that left engine yeah, that, is that all is, fucked that up. That it's fucking open and, and like jalopy. Yeah. When I say that being eight years old was the exact right age to be when Star Wars came out, my one doubt about that is I wonder what it was like being a teenager. Smoking weed with your, you know, your Camaro. Well, it's, it's, yeah, and going it's to watch American Star Wars graffiti, right? the seventeenth like, time because Luke Skywalker is you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but Luke Skywalker was me when I was seven too, and then Luke Skywalker right. was me when I was seventeen, and Luke Skywalker is me now. And now that there's old Luke, I'm old. <laughs> er, oh, he's so old. Like this guy. it's it, it it kind of feels appropriate, right? So speaking of getting older, okay. um. And there was an old lady. She lived down the street. She was obsessed with Shakespeare, and then she died. <laughs> but I got this I'm awesome rest, mini fig shelf over there, and I don't have room for this one. Oh, and it's your I birthday. Well, look at how fucking amazing and <laughs> giant he also shelf bought me is. lunch. This is like I'm, the size of me. I'm very so, excited uh, about this. You you have the appropriate space. Yeah. And you also have ten million mini figs. I know, and my shelf is getting swamped. So yeah, this, this is good. Yeah. This is so, good. Uh, Dude. From from her to me Thanks. to you, thank you, Shakespeare lady. And on that note, uh, we've been hanging out with you guys for roughly an hour and a half. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, um, thanks for still watching. If yeah. you are indeed still, hopefully watching. you like Star Wars. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope, really hope you like. Star Wars. Shout out to Clutch. Do you want to open something real quick? Do you want to sure. look at some shit? Um. Uh. So Clutch, the homie Clutch, is still doing the poster subscription service. There you go. There's a fucking poster over there. The Alpha, Alpha One. One. It's it's legit. It goes with my uh, Sermer Lego Bros. He's doing the subscription service. I'm kind of spoiled. I know a little bit what's in here. Um, I know Surprises. one thing. Clutch's secret stash. Shout out to Clutch. Let's uh let's just open this up and let's not do a big thing. Why don't you pick one thing and I'll pick one thing. Oh. There you go. <laughs> okay. I actually brought one of these mofos from that set that I got that had that other guy. And this is a bag full of those spiky round bricks. Nice. Thanks, Clutch. Except from Andrew. Oh, man. What you got? Uh, all right. So I, I, I got a couple of good things in here. I'm going to pick this one, though, because this is fucking hilarious. Nice. Um, Lego Island. Neighborhood watch sticker. <laughs> Might have to put this outside. Like I have a real security system, except this is a shitty Lego dude. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So anyway, watch out, Lego um, bad guys. You're fucked. Fucking Star Wars. Fucking Star Wars. Clink to that. It's been a long time um, coming. Yeah. Now. You know, we, you, we'll have more to say about Star Wars. What Jeff and I were talking oh, yes. about before this. So was, much uh, more. He, he kind of wants to do like a, you know, just a, a follow-up episode where we just fill the gaps every time. Oh, we, every single episode I've been every, on, I've forgotten shit to say. There's there's a story trail. And when I watch it, a, I there's go... There's a nugget of information. Damn. And you're like... It would almost be better if we had, uh, I don't know, annotations that could pop up that would say like, correction, A lot of, this, this, a lot of things would almost be better. But that, that would be a lot of work. Yeah, and, uh, that's yeah. not gonna happen. You know, it's hard enough to make this happen, and this yeah. is crazy crap. And this is this is fucking toys everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Um, Cheers, guys. Till next time. I guess episode forty-eight is next. Episode fifty is coming. It'll be something. It'll be episode fifty. It'll be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, on that note, fucking thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Star Wars. Till next time. Uh. May the force be with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.